What is happening around you? And the council is here again. Mm -hmm. And Apollo is, he is holding me. Mm -hmm. It is great pain that we feel. Because we, we tried to help with humanity in the past. Mm -hmm. And all of the extraterrestrial races and the Elohim that, that came to, to help at that time. Our plans didn't, didn't eventuate the way that we liked. Sure, we, we got rid of, we got rid of the problem, but we made a lot of mistakes when we fell into identity. Mm -hmm. We felt like we had interfered too much. So which time was this? The last time I came here was after Atlantis had fallen. Mm -hmm. And we were just, we were just trying to help. And the people didn't like me very much. The humans, they, they did not respect me or, or like me very much. Did they have a reason behind it or like what was going on for them? I was, we were all involved in this conflict against against darker forces mm -hmm. and they were they were scared of me because i i had a lot of i had a lot of power I was a very powerful, or I still am, a very powerful being, and Apollo was too, and the humans, they were scared of us. They were frightened of us. Because of that we were different and what we could do, and And I have, we have never felt very welcome. Mm -hmm. Even though afterwards they, they did things like worship the Elohim. This was, this was quite silly, but That's the time they they were scared of us.
they still don't treat me very well in this human body because they knew I was different. Very different. So I felt like I had no one to trust mm -hmm. except my brothers and sisters. Is that in this lifetime as Elizabeth or? No, that was, this was last, last time. Oh, last time, yeah. I didn't, the, the humans felt scared of me and I felt scared of, of them. But of course, sometimes they, they said things about me and it made my feelings hurt and Sometimes I I wanted to run away into the forest. Mm -hmm. There, is there some um, inner work for your lower self to do in this lifetime to heal from that time or? Yes, but she has done, done a lot of it already. Mm -hmm. It's just time to, to leave these, these things behind. Mm -hmm. people being she being the black sheep and the council they they are comforting me mm -hmm. They knew how hard it would be for me to come. They knew how difficult it would be for my beingness. So they have always been here for me. I really just wanted the humans and Elohim to get along and to be to be friends with each other, but they really understand so little. Mm -hmm. So little at the moment to do with. with the universe and to do with love. It's like watching a child continuously hurt itself. And then you, you intervene and you say stop. But no matter how hard you try it, it felt like it continued to hurt itself. It was hard to watch. It's hard to watch people destroy themselves and destroy their planet. Mm -hmm. Mm 
and then they they hated us and blamed us because they felt that you know, we didn't do enough or we didn't solve their problems. But we couldn't, we, we tried to intervene before, but this went, this did not go as we had hoped. So it, it was hard when they, they were very angry with us mm -hmm. and blamed us, and took their anger out. But it's they did not realize that a lot of this was coming from within them. So it is it is hard. It was hard to watch them circle the wagons for thousands and thousands of years until this time. We have been watching in the background, mm -hmm. watching as we, we were seeing things on earth and it was upsetting to say the least. It was very confronting. From your perspective, has it gotten worse or has it gotten better? Well, it, the worst has to be seen. Mm -hmm. It has to be seen by you, by humanity. It needs to be seen what we have seen, what we have seen happening in hidden places and It needs to be viewed. There needs to be a looking in the mirror rather than blaming, blaming us or other humans or anything like that. To look and see how we have all humanity has all contributed in one way or another to to this of course the star seeds are, are here to help but some of them are well, there's a lot of them that are very, very focused on still lower fourth dimensional concepts, wanting to, to blame evil ones. This is a lower fourth dimensional concept to this battle between good and evil, and we did participate in this a long time ago, but as we move forward, you will have to, the council are saying that the best way to move forward would be to graduate from this, graduate from this duality in a sense and how would you do that the fifth dimension is a place of love unity 
coming together. Kindness and light. If you want to play games of he is the bad one, I am the good one, and that is the fourth dimension, but if you want to start to walk towards the fifth dimension, you will have to integrate and You don't need to play these games when you are in the fifth dimension. That is what we would like, even though we were part of this good versus evil as well. All of us are tired of this Elohim and all of the extraterrestrial races and we are all connected together. So when the more humans choose to go forth and they don't need to play these games anymore. It's it's like it frees all of us. The counselor saying that the dark ones are suffering deeply. You just don't know. It's very, it's difficult to explain this because so many people have put, well, blame on outside things. whether it be the dark ones, and they have done very, very horrible things, but like Yahweh always says, forgiveness is freedom. It frees you, but it also frees them. And if you keep putting out energy hooks to the dark ones. They will keep attaching onto you. So let them go. Let them go. So is the fifth dimension, um, can is the fifth dimension here? Can we be in a fifth dimension here? There are patches of the fifth dimension already existing. You can create a fifth dimensional space for yourself as well. But there are parts of this reality that I would just say glitching into the new earth reality even at the moment. Reality is not what you think it is. There are bubbles, bubbles of this. And the way that you would access these, these patches is to, to be in this, in this space that I just spoke of this love and unity consciousness. It's always within you as well. It's not always necessarily something that's outside of you. But you will notice when the colors are more bright and vivid and there is great beauty to be seen and a great upliftment that is felt in the heart. And these are the places that are glitching and 
and merging in with this and to you make it onto yourself as well with your field. That is why we have advised the lower self and helping with moving to a new place so that one can be amongst the trees and the nature for when greater changes begin to occur. So she can be in a place it's like a little sanctuary where she will be very safe and loved in her bubble. So is that change coming for her um, in the near future? These are changes that are coming for everyone. So because we did speak about um, having a, um, a larger space for her and her family, do you see this happening? Yes, a space with her family. And and with with nature and and trees mm -hmm. and animals. So as that song says, even if the sky is falling, she will be safe and sound. A lot of the star seeds are, they are going to start to get feelings to maybe to move locations or to do things differently. Mm -hmm. To start to go into their modes of safety, not safety, that's the wrong word, but their bubbles to shield them from negative energies and then broadcast the positive energies these well i would say their own sanctuaries so that they continue can continue to broadcast what is needed to be broadcasted for the collective mm -hmm. so if they are very sensitive they will need to be shielded from negative energies that could that could disrupt the progress so this is what i'm talking about with with the moving moving situation mm -hmm. there is a calling to to move for the whole family Is there anything else you wanted to know about that? That everyone, everyone who is on this path will be kept safe and sound. Even if the sky is falling, you will be kept safe and sound. Not, not literally, I want to say, but like this, like that song, even if you see are seeing things that are very frightening to you. You will be safe and sound and well, I guess hugged by your soul families and galactic families, cuddled by them. If you can imagine them putting their arms around you.
Thank you for that. Now, um, how did the humans perceive the extra extraterrestrial Elohim at the time that you were talking about before? When they were scared of us, mm -hmm. they were scared, as I have, I have said. They were frightened and did not understand who you are or they did not understand what they were seeing. The world was very changed for them. Things were very frightening. And they took our arrival to, to mean something bad. Rather than it was to help liberate the planet at that time from dark extraterrestrial forces. So did they perceive other extraterrestrial extraterrestrials different to the Elohim? Yes, they they viewed the Elohim with a lot more caution. Mm -hmm. um, they they were wary around the other extraterrestrial beings. Most certainly, they were very wary of them. But they were at some places. The Elohim were well received, like in Egypt, for example, but in other places they, they weren't. So in Egypt, there was a lot of extraterrestrial presence in that time because generally the people were more accepting of this, so they felt comfortable to be in this place. Mm -hmm. Before a lot of them, were actually visiting Atlantis at different times. These extraterrestrials from various places. So the extraterrestrial involvement in Earth has been very much covered up, but there have been many, many races involved. What were the differences between ordinary humans and the so-called demigods with an Elohim parent in those times? Okay, so when, when an Elohim and a human parent was meeting up, well, sometimes this was for, for different reasons like The Elohim had to, had to plan for the future, for incarnating into, into bodies, but also we were, we were uplifting the, I guess, the genetics at that time as well amongst the human race, but in order for us to to come again in human bodies, there, there would need to be some alteration in the DNA mm -hmm. of the human species because it's very, very hard to fit such a soul into a body when it's very advanced. So certain families that carry this genetic material are able to have higher density souls incarnate into the bodies without so much problem. So this is why this started to happen, but also some, some of the Elohim took a liking to certain humans. Mostly it was women who were very kind and so the offspring of these beings were 
very much different to regular humans. They had advanced psychic capabilities. They were bigger. They were physically, they looked far more, how would you say, beautiful or finely featured in the face and sometimes contain some features like like curly wavy hair when it come to some Elohim that had this this trait in the physical bodies that they manifested for themselves at the time with their own consciousness sometimes they they decided to look a certain way and then the child would look like this as well and they had a lot of capabilities and extra strength and they were not necessarily so confined to confined to physicality in that sense they could how would I put this? They had, they had abilities that set them apart because they had the DNA capabilities and they did not contain any programming. It was like this was broken away through the Elohim DNA. So some of them had super strength and various capabilities that you would see as miraculous and they lived a long time usually, a very long time. Or, and if they chose to live, for example, on the earth for a long time, then they would, but a lot of them decided to, well, some of them, not all of them, some of them stayed behind. And then they, the ones that stayed behind, they carried on this genetic material into the earth humans. But some of them came with us when we left. Some of them ascended up with us and, and left and dissolved the physical body. They no longer needed the physical body because we did not need the physical body anymore at that point. We were we were returning back. We were returning away from us. So none of us needed our physical bodies anymore at that point. So some of them came with us and we shed the physical form and assumed light bodies. What are the differences of Elohim blood in the genetics today? Well, for example, a lot of Elohim started, they will have they will have abilities that are not like the usual, like the gift of clairvoyance, but to, to a greater extent, like psychic gifts to a much greater extent than, say, the regular person. And then this will be very much switched on to the beginning and it doesn't usually get too switched off, even though there is the programming and the pinching off of the prana pole. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of these, these families, because they had these abilities, some of them were targeted in the Middle Ages and had to go into hiding but a lot of these families were very well taken care of because we were watching the whole time. We had to ensure for their survival, even through the Middle Ages when 
they would be called a witch or having they make up a story and say that they had contact with demons or something. Mm -hmm. These were more protected so that we didn't get wiped out entirely. These, these humans did not get wiped out. What happened to the child that Apollo had in Germany? In Germany, it was well, this, in the previous session. This child, this child was the beginning of the lower self's family. This little girl coming from this time through through the mother's her mother's line so it was it was at the very beginning of this what was her name family mm -hmm. let me see her name was Elsa or something to do with Elsa or Elasa I'm not sure if they pronounced it like this, mm -hmm. but it was a little girl, and then Apollo had this this child with with a woman who was for well, now in the now what is referred to as Germany at at the time it in the countries did not have little sections, but it was in this this area that it happened and he had he had the child here and then she she grew up and she had her own children as well mm -hmm. and they they lived apart from the rest of the community, this family, they lived apart in, in a little hut and they had a big garden and around the forest. And how the mother got to know Apollo, she was, she was walking through, through the forest and he approached her and of course with with the intention that he already knew who she was and was already interested in her because he had been watching and so they had the child and she did fall in love with him at this time. This was the times that we were all on earth very, very long time ago. And so, of course, I, I allowed him to, to do this because I realized that this was, he, he told me that he had found he had found the one, the family that would provide the body for my incarnation now. Mm -hmm. He found a really good one. And what he was, found, what did he, what made him choose that lady? She was very kind and she took care of the animals mm -hmm. when they were injured or hurt I'm not quite sure why I'm upset I'm not quite sure actually 
It is because she had these special traits. Mm -hmm. These special traits that were very kind to my soul. Well, they were very, very of the right vibration with my soul. This, this woman, she, she matched it perfectly. She was very much similar to me in a sense. She was, she was kind to the animals and she used herbs from the garden and she was very intuitive mm -hmm. and loving and it was just the right, the right one the right one for, for my beingness. So how many um, lifetimes ago was that? How many um, incarnations or? Generations. Generations, yes. I haven't, I haven't had I haven't been reincarnating on this earth. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I stayed away for many, 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 many years because the vibration was too, too corrosive for me. So I stayed away for a very long time. But this was a very, very long time ago, like in the 15,000 plus years ago mark. I'm not very good with times, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But it was around 15,000 years ago that this woman was around. And does she have any resemblance to your lower self now? She is like my mother. Mm -hmm. And I am like the child. Elsa. So it is similar in a sense. Mm -hmm. It's it's similar. I mean we are we are different beings, we are different people, but like these people were similar to the relationship that I have in my current life. See, mm -hmm. everything sort of mirrors each other. Everything comes around in a circle. Mm -hmm. And so they lived at the edge of the forest and she grew up. She grew up like this at the edge of the forest, away from the rest of the community. So she could keep her powers to herself and they wouldn't try to, I guess, hunt her down or anything like this. These people kept to themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, what were the differences between ordinary humans and say a humanoid, humanoid Palladian or Syrian at the time? If they bred with humans, what would the difference be in 
an offspring of that? Well, first of all, the Pleiadians and you see, there was quite a few different extraterrestrial humanoid races that was coming to Earth at these times. There was, of course, Elohim, but there was Pleiadians too, but also Lyran beings. Mm -hmm. So, um, Lyran humanoids, and they're not always the cat, the cat people that is referenced, mm -hmm. the cat beings. There is um, a lot of Lyran humanoids out there that that certainly exist. And a lot of these came in Syrian humanoids and Syrian beings. And some of these Syrians had no hair. And some of the hybrid beings like Toph, they did grow some, they did grow hair. They did grow hair if they were a hybrid being with a couple of genetic alterations. And they looked, they looked very much like humans, except they weren't humans. You know, mm -hmm. these the hybrid, the Syrian hybrid beings, they were like, you know, you couldn't really tell them apart as much, although they were taller and they had finer features and they they lived like very much longer. They, they could keep on living for thousands of years, these types of beings. Mm -hmm. So Toth was one of these and the first ruler of, the first human hybrid ruler of Egypt was one of these. It was Syrian DNA mixed with humanoid DNA, a regular human, but also, there was some genetic changes to do with this as well. But the Lyran beings, the Lyran humanoids were different again. Mm -hmm. They had bigger eyes and then there were elf beings. Elf beings with elf ears. So obviously, they looked different because they had different ears and different eyes. Their eyes, their pupils were much bigger mm -hmm. and their bodies were, well, it just depended on the variation, the species of them. Some of them had thicker bodies and some of them had quite frail bodies, thinner bodies. So it just, it just depended on which planet which planetary sphere sphere that they were from and, and what not. Mm -hmm. But when humans were reproduced with these, of course there was differences in the offspring. Um, like the benefits that I mentioned before, such as longer lifespan, increased far more increased psychic abilities, um, the abilities to, to do with, you know, I guess, various what you would call um, supernatural abilities with the body and they were not necessarily confined to physicality as well which is why they could do these things. They were not, not confined, but what's the word? They were not brought down by the physicality. They were not trapped by it because they just did not have this in their beingness. This was neutralized by, by the more the additional DNA that had been added to them. And of course, you know, these beings would be well taken care of by their parents. So 
when this happens, they tried to give the child um, as little programming as possible. And sometimes some of these extraterrestrial beings actually took some of these children with them on the ships. Mm. And that had a lot to do with it as mm. well. They took some of these back because they did not quite trust um, the earth at this point. So sometimes they they did take these children for for well, what they thought of as their own safety because they did not want to see their children programmed or anything to befall them, like them to be, you know, hunted out or hurt in any way. Mm -hmm. So some of these children with the extraterrestrial beings at that time were whisked away on the ships. Or they, you know, they naturally or well, sometimes as well, the, the wife or not wife, but partner of these extraterrestrial beings, some of them actually went on the ships with them as well. And they, they left the earth because they did not want to have anything to do with what was to come. So well, some of them decided to do this. And some of them decided to stay amongst the population of the earth for various reasons. The, the ones that were hybrid beings. So subconscious, would you say that the um, 3D body would be able to get to a, a ship? The 3D body? You must have love in your heart from a fifth dimensional sense in order to be beamed up in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's why when the lower self was walking past, walking past that particular street, there is a part in the street at the end of the street where the fifth dimension is significantly raised and there is nature beyond that point with a field that has many, many horses in it. So when she walked past this and was listening to her music, it put her in significantly a much higher vibration through listening to the uplifting music and going into this or near this fifth dimensional bubble that was existing around that point. So by going around this and then walking up the street, she was significantly raised. However, this will be much easier in the new move when she moves to this new place with lots of trees and the nature around. This will be much easier to do checkups and all of this type of stuff. But one must be moving significantly away from the third dimension. Otherwise, it's very difficult for them to be beamed up. So was that the case when I was beamed up as well or...? What was going on there? Yes, it seems that you were in a fifth dimensional space of being at the time. We phase in and out of these, these, I guess, phases all of the time without necessarily realizing it. We are going up and down and up and down and up and down. Mm -hmm. And sometimes this is through being in nature or being with animals, this typically raises the vibration. And being around these, these fifth dimensional patches, one is raised up, but also the very consciousness of the person when it is going up, this can be possible. 
Okay, so when these people had the um the children, they had like a partner. They could all choose to go on a ship. Is that what you're saying? Yes, at that time, very long ago. If they wanted to, they could choose to do so. Is that still the case now? Mm. Let's say if your lower self wanted to go on a ship, would she be able to stay? Not until we have completed what we need to complete. Mm -hmm. That is, well, you would need to stick to the life contract. You couldn't go mm, wandering around the universe at this point because there's still much that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Well, with the lower self and all of the star seeds that are listening, you still have a lot of things that you need to do in order to, I guess, this is all a part of a big divine plan. So mm -hmm. the times back then were significantly different, significantly different times to the times now. And we have been given tasks to do. Mm -hmm. We have been given things to do in our lifetimes that we need to do. And for some people, it is just simply being there and then spreading the vibrations. But there will, of course, as I said before, there will come times where we need to create more fifth dimensional sanctuaries for ourselves in order to put out these energies, these to be like a lighthouse and to stay in this in this fifth dimensional state of being while things the road might get a bit bumpy it is good to have a sanctuary where one can well i guess keep the vibration significantly up mm -hmm. and keep them Keep them not going wibbly wobbly like they have been. Well, to keep them high even when things get low is what I'm trying to say. Because there might be there might be shocks. There might be shocks which would dive the consciousness, the general consciousness of humanity, which would nose dive it. Mm -hmm. And then the star seeds and beings, if they migrate to their sanctuaries or make a sanctuary for themselves, they will not nosedive with the rest of humanity's consciousness. They will be able to keep themselves up above water. And what is important about them keeping their sanctuary or keeping them themselves on a high vibration and not going into despair like the rest? Oh, everything, everything. It it changes the it changes the timelines. It changes the timelines. It these sanctuaries will be there will be these bubbles that I'm just seeing these bubbles that will be part of the new earth. So when you are creating these, these sanctuaries, this is going to be the new earth sort of grid with these star seeds on it, creating these sanctuaries. So they are going to be kept up above water and hopefully I'm just seeing as they are kept up above water, some beings can cling to them for safety and support, while many other beings are nose diving. There will be many beings that cling to these posts for safety and support. 
So they are like lighthouses in a sense, showing the way. Thank you for that. Um, what would you say in your, from your perspective, what is the RH blood? The RH negative is blood type. Yes, yes, RH negative, sorry. Yes, well, this is, this is part of the Pleiadian, the Pleiadian and Lyran, so the original original humanoid humanoids bloodline so the humanoids that bred with the earth humans some of this went into the dna and is expressed in this blood type mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily what people are saying this is the reptilian one no not not necessarily this is the Pleiadian Lyran original humanoid blood type. However, this is not to say that only beings with this blood type could be having some good skills associated with being a star. That is not the case at all because there are many mixes in the blood and many alterations in the DNA from various star seeds that would suit their purpose, that would suit their particular reason for coming and suit their particular soul. Mm -hmm. So some people that are saying, well, the RH negative is, is better than others, it is the it is the one that star seeds need to have, and I am so special because I have this blood type. You are mistaken because there have been many mixes in the blood in association to extraterrestrials coming. For example, the Elohim bloodline would not be, it would not express in this way, but it expresses more at the DNA level rather than something that is, well, changing the blood type, for example. So some people have been very, I guess it's, it's quite silly, this dividing between, oh, well, I have this blood type, so I am very special or something like that. That's quite ridiculous. You are going backwards with this. This is not helpful at all in my opinion mm -hmm. just it is it is your body is especially constructed for your soul you chose your body for a particular reason all of the star seeds i want them to know that they chose their body and they chose their families for a particular reason. So to say, well, I am the best because I have this particular bloodline or this particular blood type, it would be wrong. It would be wrong to assume this is the case because everyone's case is different and tailored to their unique situation. Mm -hmm. Now, we said that humans are genetic royalty of the universe because they have all these influences from different ET species. Is that true? Yes, they have many, many influences from various races. So they are very special in this regard. And the council wants to say that you have forgotten how special you are. You have given away your power yet again and again and again. And you are going to have to remember it. This would be the most important to stop thinking that outside forces have switched off your DNA. You can switch this back on again. And the children are being born with more it's strands of DNA and all of this is happening and you can switch these back on. It is 
as simple as that. You just give away your power to do with this and say that you have fallen and that they have mm, altered your DNA in a sense. But you are very powerful. So why wait? And seize, seize that for yourself and change that for yourself because there is much wisdom there. There is much that you can draw from. Humans have been lied to on purpose and this perhaps does more damage than any switching off would do. Been lied to about who they are, where they come from. They have been told that they are just have evolved from monkeys, which is not, this is not true. There was some ape-like beings that were sampled and put into the mix of the original humans, but since then there is much more extraterrestrial than there is of this ape. You have to know this at this time it is much much different to these original humans that were sampled okay so since this time there were times when of course like the times that i told of before where there were extraterrestrial beings that were that mated with some humans and this changed things as well so this this made things more on the extraterrestrial side and less on the ape side for this before it was more like maybe it was like 40 percent ape and then 60 percent extraterrestrial dna now it is more like only a very, very small percent ape due to the various mixes of extraterrestrials that have come, come and gone in this time. So they have lied to you about your origins and they have lied about the origins of humanoid beings. And it would be wise to to know that you are very powerful beings and the rest of your humanoid families, the Lyrans, the Pleiadians and so on, they are very much looking forward to, to you becoming part of the galactic family once more because we had this in Atlantis and it went downhill, it went downhill greatly, but we had this, and we had this, and we can have this again and make it good this time, make it better. Would you say that uh, the star seeds, are the star seeds different genetically to regular people, and how so? Yes, they contain more extraterrestrial DNA, specifically of the race, which they have, well, the representative races that they are representing in this, in this, I wouldn't say conflict, but each star seed is representing some some races in this, some, some, how would I say this? They are representatives. They are representatives, so they carry the DNA of their representative families. They do, so that they can, they can acclimatize themselves much more easier to the body. Mm -hmm. So 
for example, mostly I am representative of the Elohim, but I also have within me representative of Pleiadian and Lyran and so on. And someday I will go into the Lyrans as well. I have a connection to them. So it is, I guess, dependent on the representative, what you are representing and bringing forward. And typically the star seeds that are representatives, they would remember the representative lifetimes very clearly compared to the billions and trillions of other lifetimes that they have lived. They will remember the representative ones first and foremost in order to help and be of service. And what if they don't? Is it well, because it's not that time for them to bring that forward or...? would you say not necessarily they will have to bring it forward eventually it is part of their soul contract to remember this and to bring this forward or to at least remember a little bit of it to at least remember somewhat that they are part of this but i'm seeing that some of them have definitely forgotten and they will receive various wake up calls if they are not on their soul contract. And would you say that they're different? Like it starts off as a subtle and then it becomes, what would a remembrance or a um, nudge from the galactic family look like? Well, I could talk about my particular, what happened to me. Mm -hmm. In my instance, I was going the wrong way. So I was not, they wanted to nudge me in a different direction. So I begin to have a big wake up call and it looked like, it looked like my life was almost completely over in a sense because I was rejected from all of these jobs that I wanted to apply to. But this was not part of my soul contract to choose this. I was meant to go on a different path. And they, they were nudging me and, and it looked like very unfortunate for me because every single one of these jobs that my lower self would apply to, she never got a single one never ever ever mm -hmm. and so she fell into a deep depression because of this and then started to receive messages here from and there from extraterrestrial beings sometimes when sitting at the bed late at night sometimes these these beings would come and share something with her so often in these states of transformation and feeling like there is no hope at the close there is an opening and these beings make themselves known through various ways and so they decided to ramp it up significantly so there was more messages more nudgings more everything and even to go to the extent of messages within the dreams very very profound messages profound awakenings even the beings from the soul family apollo in my instance whispering something directly through telepathy dropping it directly in but in a very sort of loud sense so that she would hear it um so 
when one goes through a transformational journey, this can look very difficult sometimes, but this can bring them back on the path. Mm -hmm. So some people experience like accidents and things like that, like? Yes, accidents, rejections, sicknesses. I had, I had a few sicknesses that were to infuse my DNA with new information to and my beingness with new information to start the process of awakening. And these sicknesses were given as like a catalyst point for the various parts of the beingness of the lower self to begin to awaken to higher truths. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Um, just going back to the hybrids, what were the hybrid rulers of Egypt, would you say? These beings were, well, there was two of them and then there was no more of them after that. There was there was one and he ruled for 1,000 years or I'm not good so good with times, but he ruled for a very long time. He was abnormal, he lived an abnormally long life compared to humans of this era. Mm -hmm. And then he had he had a son. And unfortunately, the son got murdered. So when he became a ruler, so that was no good. And after that, it continued with regular human rulers. But these beings, we, we put them in place because we, well, especially me, I helped to make this decision to begin with because humans still needed guidance at this time from a kind a kind being, but also someone who represented them, who was part human as well. I did not think it was appropriate for Elohim to continue to interfere so much. I had felt for quite some time and well, relayed my concerns to the council that we had interfered so much already. And I was, I did not want to interfere any more than what was necessary. I did not even like being here very much, to be honest but everyone had a different opinion. But at least the council, they, they did see to it that they did take my concern and they were concerned too that we had interfered too much. And I, I did not want to interfere so much. I did not want to do this because I knew, I knew that there would be consequences of this and there was. And some of the Elohim, they did not listen to this. The council were listening to it though. They were very much agreeing with that. So I guess my personal opinion was to not interfere so much with this. Like I am the type of being that does like to keep to myself a little bit more. But I could see that they needed guidance so much this is what I was upset about at the beginning. All of the Elohim were 
we were holding each other and well, reminiscing about and healing from the pain that we felt from our guilty decision of interfering too much. You can help too much. Many extraterrestrial races have done just this. And there is a feeling of, of guiltiness on the lower levels from doing such, of shame and guilt from interfering too much in the past. And what happens when you interfere too much? Well, it creates lots of problems for some Elohim. But they have, they have been, some of them have had to incarnate to work this out, have incarnations. Well, beforehand, before this time, they've had to have incarnations to sort this out, to, to release some of their karmic from, I guess, the earth sphere. But we are coming to the end of the point where we would like to release all of our karma because it is birthing into the new cycle, birthing into the new reality. And so we are going to, we are going to release as a collective in at this time, the guilt and shame that we feel from interfering too much. I am holding hands with the council and we are just releasing this for our, for our collective. Mm -hmm. For the Elohim collective, we are releasing this, this shame and guilt from interfering too much. And so this will not affect me going forward. And this will not affect the other Elohim star seeds going forward mm -hmm. or the other Elohim in general. We are releasing in all dimensions, through all space and time, releasing this shame, releasing this guilt. And so it is. Would you say that the elite and ruling families have ET bloodlines today? Yes, they they do, and some of them are even connected to the, to the Elohim, which is disappointing for us in itself. This is part of the shame that continued on and sadness from what had left behind because some beings that were, let's say, demigods and then reproduced, some of their offspring took it upon themselves to consider themselves better and the rest of humankind to consider them like dirty cattle in comparison to their greatness. And I just want to say that we did not want this to occur, of course, but this was these beings choices for them to do this. I know it seems very, very painful. And a lot of these bloodlines have, well, 
mated with reptilian beings as well and fallen angelics. So it just depends upon the particular one. But there was ones from, from the good, well, what you would call the positive side as well, that pretended to be better than everyone else because because they had parts of Elohim DNA within them. Uh, would you say that Set or Satan also inbred with the humans at that time? Yes, the fallen cherubim. Well, we say fallen, but when you are fallen in density from an angelic being, you are not really an angelic being anymore. You become something else. But this something else did inbreed or did make a physical form for himself and he did breed with some some of the women of the earth mm -hmm. and so this has been i guess very much sought after and some there are some families that carry a lot of darkness with this in it some of these families in italy that are, well, I guess those royal families that are, well, how would you say, like the hidden rulers of the world, especially the name Medici comes to mind, especially these ones. Mm -hmm. They have well, sets DNA in the bloodline, and that is why they are so respected among those worlds, let's just say among those circles, those circles of people. But this will surprise people as well, but there were some very very high vibrational ascended masters that decided to come into the bloodline of these beings, offspring as well, various offspring he had, to, I guess, lighten this and clear this and change this, change the family line. Mm -hmm. Ascended Masters chose these specifically to bring light into this and to transform it, transform this bloodline. And did they succeed or? Yes, they, they did for these particular, in these particular instances they did. They most certainly did. The one whom you know very well. And who would that might be? Well, the bloodline of Jesus especially had both Elohim mixed with a bit of Seth's bloodline in it. It was a marriage of the two, which is going to be quite surprising for everyone. But he sought to unite these and to bring light into this. When Yahweh put a little bit of his soul into a body, this was his intention. This was his intention to, to bridge the polarity between darkness and light. This is 
the Christ consciousness. Forgiveness is the way. Forgiveness and love. So he had both of these within him. He had a little bit of set and he had some Elohim. And it was like a marriage of these two that, well, this was the intention to bring light to this, to bring love to this, to shine, shine light on this hurt, hurt place and to go forward with this because this is the fifth dimensional experience that I'm talking about. Many humans have reptilian DNA in the blood as well. And even married with, you know, Pleiadian and Elohim and angelic DNA. And well, when you go to the fifth dimension, you are realizing that there is no separation, there is just love. And it's through this unity that you stop the forces that, the forces of the wars of darkness and light that are not only in the outside, but are within you, within your own bloodstream, a fight between darkness and light exists until you ascend to that place of beingness, that place of love within the fifth dimension. And as you go to this place, this fight within yourself ceases because there is no tugging and pushing and pulling. It's not only within you, and it's within the world and it's within everything actually. So I guess this is quite, quite a profound sort of way to think of things that when you are you're having this battle between dark and light and you are in the lower fourth dimension to do with this, this push and pull, you are feeling it within yourself, within your entire bloodline and family, this struggle between the two. And then you move and you move into unity and oneness and love. And this is, of course, the Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. and what happened when Lumina had a child with Toth on Earth? What sort of being was that child? Well, this is a little bit of a funny story. So one day I was being very irresponsible in the forest with my physical body and mm -hmm. Toth was getting too excited. And he, he usually practices a retention of the sperm, but he did not do it that day. He went whoop. And something happened and I turned around to him and I said, what did you just do? And he, he got too excited, he did. And I knew instantly that something had happened and I, I was in trouble. I was in trouble. So I, I went up to Apollo and I said, um, I, I think I have been irresponsible with my physical body. <laughs> I think something has happened. And he said, well, what's that? And he's laughing. <laughs> he is laughing and the council is laughing too. Um, I said, I'm pregnant. And then he was like, 
no. In my physical body, I was irresponsible. I'm very, very sorry. And this should not have happened, but it did. So unfortunately, because the humans were not particularly respectful to me and we were we were telling the humans one thing and this would completely it was a bit of a lie that I was a virgin but this was this was said for my own safety so that men wouldn't jump on me and and do awful things so that well I was a virgin for religious reasons as well that they should not touch me in this way so I wouldn't have any more incidents like the one where I killed three people accidentally anyway so this would completely ruin the story so ruin the story that we have concocted to keep the women Elohim safe so I had to go up on the ship and take a quick break not a quick break, it was the regular pregnancy sort of break. I took I took maternity leave from the duties that I was doing on earth at that time. Mm -hmm. And I went through a portal and at the end of that portal there was a ship that was waiting for me. So I went up in the ship and then I had maternity leave in this extraterrestrial ship. So I just stayed up on the ship and I was growing bigger my belly and Toth and Apollo often come into me into visit the ship. They came into the ship to visit me. Oftentimes they liked to come and visit me in the ship. And so then I, I gave birth and then well, I don't remember most of it because they put my physical body to sleep and then they just did it like this. So I would have no pain at all and nothing like that. And then they pulled out the child and then when I woke up, Toth was there and he was very, very happy. He was happy to see me and Apollo was there too. And it was a baby girl. And this was a very happy mistake, I guess. It was a mistake, but it was a very lovely mistake. And I enjoyed my time on the ship mm -hmm. and we stayed with her for a little while until she became around five years old. And then we, we went back to continue our duties with the earth and she was taken care of on the ship. And they had many, many wonderful things and educations for her that she could do. What did you name this child? Mm. Palata. How do I say? I am not so good with remembering the, not remembering, but translating the names because it's rather an energetic name. Palata. Yes, this was the name of the child. Does it have a meaning in, or is it just a, a vibration or a... Um... Yes, it's more of a vibration actually, which was quite hard for us to translate it. It was hard. It's hard for me to translate the particular light language. This is actually from its light language. So it is containing a particular vibration mm -hmm. this word so 
sometimes it is difficult with the physical body to translate these sort of things, a vibration into, into a word that can be spoken, but it is more of like a vibration in a sense. Okay. Um, so the child stayed on the ship for the rest of her life, was it? Yes, the child stayed on the ship until we, until we went home, until we left for the earth, and then we reunited with the child. And then we decided to have another at some point, but that was further on after we had left the earth and we did not have a physical body at that point so it was all different yeah the um 25,000 year point of the cycles when did that start exactly in terms of, of our time and when did it begin again so it began approximately as Atlantis started to descend into darkness. So Atlantis was already around at this point. And as it began to descend into darkness, this was the beginning of the cycle. The sinking of La Remuria really kicked this off really. And then it was, it was a cycle that was a great depression. It was a dipping of the consciousness. It was moving from that love, well, that love energy to the furthest point of separation. And now we have to move back again. So I'm talking about the cycles. Mm -hmm. This is like a miniature cycle within the much larger cycles. So it is quite a long time for humanity. However, it is only but a short sort of time for beings such as Archangels, Elohim and so forth and other beings of this nature who have been watching for quite some time. But this smaller cycle is part of the much larger cycle. And the larger cycle, as you would see it, is at the edge of its capacity in regards to separation. So not only did the earth reach the furthest separation point, but in doing so, the universe reached, has reached the furthest separation point before we begin to move in and turn the cusp back, back into oneness. This is the turning point for the entire universe. I am just seeing the larger cycle and the tiny, tiny cycle of the earth and the separation. And it's like a tiny, tiny, tiny dot on this large cycle that's going to turn back. And it's turning back. There's a, there's a corner on this huge universal scale and we have reached the apex of it. We have reached the apex of this point 
with such darkness that we have seen and separation in the universe so far, not only to do with Earth, but to do with various galactic conflicts, but Earth was particularly dark, okay? Particularly the things that have happened here are particularly dark. So it is, that is why so many beings are watching at this time watching this place, especially the Milky Way, because this place has been particularly dark and there have been calls to match up with the larger universal cycles. There is a great effort in order to turn the cusp, to turn back into oneness, because we know that it is the time it is not only time for the smaller cycles to turn the cusp, but the ginormous universal cycle is turning. It's turning the cusp. And while this large universal cycle takes a much longer time to turn the cusp, and I guess the smaller cycles take much less time to turn the cusp, Regardless, it is all turning back in the direction of oneness, which will, when you turn around, and this is what I was talking about previously, with the universe becoming more snuggly and loving, and then everything condenses in on itself and we become back into oneness again. So this is the turning point. The universe is halfway over. That's just what I'm, in a nutshell, that is what this is all about. The universe is halfway over. Not over. Over is a, a wrong sort of way. It's moving into the cycle because it continues again. It continues again and again and again and again and again because everything is a cycle. Did Lumina leave any information behind from those times that could be tapped into today? Yes, I I left it within within the mountains mm -hmm. and within the trees and within nature itself. I left it because I knew that they could not destroy this earth entirely. I knew that they would pay the price if they decided to destroy this earth entirely. So I left this information within the earth. So if they blow up their home, then I guess they blow up this information, but they would be folly to do so. So it was always there. And if you connect in with the trees, if you connect in with the mountains, with the forest, you can feel the information with your heart from what I left from before. Thank you for that. Now the light language that you spoke about before, so your lower self um, has mentioned before that doing a session, she has brought forward this light language. Yes. What does this do when this is brought forward? Well, it activates anyone who is listening. It activates them to higher remembrances. Mm -hmm. And also I... The information that I left in the trees and in the mountains has to do with this. There is a song that exists within these, within the mountains and within the trees. A song like a call, 
like a call that is calling you to higher states of beingness, to rise higher and higher. And raise your hands to the light, to the oneness. To raise your hands up and to sing the song, sing the song of freedom. Make the call, make the call of freedom in your heart. It sets you on your way. And you continue to run, to run towards this. And this is the song that I left. It's a song about breaking free, breaking free of the matrix, breaking free of your own chains and running towards that beautiful horizon where you meet with your divine self. It's a song about this. So when, when you sing these sorts of songs, it creates a remembrance. And sometimes light language is spoken and then there's various light languages that exist. Each race has its own sort of light languages but the angelic and Elohim ones in particular, it's best if they are sung. I mean, they can be said as well, but mm -hmm. when it's sung, it gives it this, it gives it this vibration that is very, very uplifting. The singing is a creation. We create by singing with our hearts. We create planets by singing, singing and vibrating. And we all, some of us stand among each other or fly among each other and make the tone while we are having our light bodies. We, we sing the song. We sing the song of that planet. And it comes into beingness through the song. We sing its sacred song. And breathe the words of it into life and shape the energy with our hands. Draw the lines that will become the new world. Sing and let this energy flow from our heart, rising up, up, up into our beingness and being broadcasted out. It's hard to explain this creation Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain what happens. It's kind of like, it's more of a feeling. It's a feeling and a vibration rather than anything that I can explain how to create, create things. And I have flown over different planets before and heard the call of the planet that it needed something. It needed something here for the energies. And then I called up, I called the mountains up into existence. I sung them up. And I pulled, I pulled the energy out. I was pulling and pulling and singing and mm, 
And then there were other angels around me. And they were assisting with this process. Sometimes we are singing together. Sometimes I sing by myself. And then we create an orchestra in some times, some instances. And we are pulling and singing and vibrating the energy. Beautiful songs we sing of creation. I guess this is perhaps the only reference to this in any sort of books or texts would be the reference in the biblical text, I guess, of the seven stars that sung in the beginning. Because we look like stars mm -hmm. and we sing. This is the only vague reference to, to the Elohim's creation capabilities or what they do, what we do together. Mm -hmm. now, what would you say is happening around the world with all the volcanoes um, becoming active? The volcanoes. They are being activated by the rising energies. It is, it is going to occur, as I have said before, that there will be earth changes. There will be earth changes in the future. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to frighten anyone. So I will not, I will not say it. And the council has told me not to, not to give these details because it would scare people. And I know in other sessions, some have given various details, but that is not for me to say we would not want to frighten people because that would lower their density. So there will be changes, but please know that it is part of a loving divine plan. All of this. And from what we have said before, to surrender to that love. And knowing that you will be safe in the sanctuaries which you go to. And please remember if you feel a calling in your heart to pack up and move somewhere or to move away. Move away to a different place. Please follow that calling. Please follow that because it will serve you well. If you get a continual sort of itch or ants in your pants sort of feeling like, I must do this, I must do this, I don't know why, but I must. You cannot, you cannot mistake this. You cannot mistake this. You cannot brush it off. You must follow this. You must follow this. This is what we will say in regards to this. So the energies are arising and this is like what I was saying with the solar event. The volcanoes are reacting to the solar, I guess, waves that keep on coming. They're happening sort of small ones now. Mm -hmm. They're small ones. And this is this is activating these these ones. The smaller, I guess, 
solar changes are, are activating this. And this is to do with the geomagnetism of the sun in relation to the earth and the solar system. The sun is at the very center of this. And everything that is going around the sun is reacting to the sun energetically and geomagnetically. The universe is filled with electricity and energy. Everything is light and electrical, light love, jolts of energy. So this is feeding into this. It's getting it's getting ready for the time. Well, thank you for that. Is there anything else that you want us to know at this time? The council has has a message that if anyone wishes to to reach out to them, they are happy to, to do so. Some mm -hmm. people, some people get frightened or scared about angels and Elohim. And we just want to know that we have been, well, giving messages all along, but they say sometimes that, well, I do not receive messages so easily from the angels. I do not receive messages so easily from the Elohim or from various beings. And we just want you to know that if you raise your vibrational frequency through that feeling of love in your heart, you will hear the messages. You will hear the messages if you have this love in your heart. It's a very easy way to receive the messages. So you can receive these messages and if just connecting in with this with this feeling and you will start to receive the messages. And do not be afraid to contact these beings. They are here to help you through these times. We are not interfering if you are reaching out to us. So we would much prefer it if you do so. If you reach out to us, then we can help. We can help very much. Absolutely, thank you. Now, would you say that um, different collectives have different parts of the puzzle that they are working together in putting out there or? Yes, every race and collective is part of this beautiful tapestry, this beautiful tapestry. And one day you will, you will see it. One day you will, you will know someday and you will be very very proud that you participated in this journey and you will be able to see your thread in the tapestry shining brightly as can be is this the same tapestry that Dolores spoke about in her books well like the smaller cycles and the larger cycles, there is a very grand tapestry of the history of the earth, the history of this universe, the history of this galaxy, for so on and so forth. There are many tapestries and, and many beings that contribute to this, but not only have 
Well, many beings, many extraterrestrial races have contributed to the tapestry of the earth. So they would, I guess, every one of them has something that they are contributing to, to this at this time. Every single one of them has a special thread, a special something that they are offering. Beautiful, thank you. Now, I just wanted to invite my um, guide, Simon, um, just to see if he's got anything that he wants me to concentrate in. If he's got yes. any messages for me. Simon is here and he's just, I am just paraphrasing for for him because I do not let any beings into the body other than my own soul. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to paraphrase what he is saying. Thank you. He says that if you want to continue with these sessions, you can do so. However, with what is going to happen, I guess a lot of people will be drawn to and come to you for, I guess, for assistance with the next part of their path. So you may have an influx of or more people that are coming to you than usual, and you will have to focus on, on this and, well, assisting them for the next part of their journey, for the next sort of activations that they will be doing. Mm -hmm. So you may be quite busy at times. You may be more busy in the future with what you are doing in the various projects. Mm -hmm. So also... Also, he is saying that, yes, it is important to continue with the books as you are concerned with. And so this will take up some time, I guess. But, you know, also the, also the people that will be coming to you will be taking up your time as well. And you have, I guess, limited time. And there may be some stressful things that will pop up on your path. So I guess the important thing is to look after yourself first and foremost with this. And you can, you can do sessions at another time, he's saying, that maybe even instead of like, weekly sessions like fortnightly ones like just change maybe the frequency of this if you still want to go ahead and you know bring the information forth from the Elohim mm -hmm. if you still want to continue with this it would be it would be very very good but you know maybe make this less frequent, for example, so that you can attend to your other duties and balance this out. Because some days you will need to be, I guess, more in your sanctuary. Like what I was speaking of before, mm -hmm. of course, it was important to bring this up for you as well, that you will need to be in your sanctuary and Maybe on those days you just do a meditation and go very much within. Mm -hmm. And especially in relation to what will be happening in the outside world, you will need to make a sanctuary for yourself as well, where you are going and looking after yourself and looking after your personal vibration and not 
bringing yourself to breaking point in any sort of way. Be, don't be afraid to say no and take care of your own vibration, to take care of this. And so you could, you know, I guess, have them less frequently if you wanted to do so and also pace out your work pace it out so that you can have lots of time within and meditating and thinking upon this and i guess making a very nice space for yourself to go into during these times mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, is there any suggestions that he has in regards to um, the, I feel like I've got an overwhelm of emotion that needs to come out? Well, the going within would do a lot to help with this. Going within and doing, doing these sorts of works where you are just very quiet on your own maybe like close your door and lie in your bed and just go into meditation or you know you could choose to use like a crystal or have a healing on yourself as well like you know a different sort of healing um, because sometimes like the bqh and quantum healing is important but it's very very active in that the person is talking and you may need some healings where you do not talk you are just sitting there in presence if you know what i mean yeah. um like for example sound healings if you find a sound healer or like a reiki Mm -hmm. like a trusted reiki not because my lower self has spoken with you and you have had not very good situations with the reiki before so maybe choose someone much different this time and have a different sort of healing like a sound healing or something where you are just sitting in presence just mm -hmm. sitting and feeling feeling these vibrations and you do not necessarily need to talk like we are doing in this um, and of course you can do this at home as well in a meditative state or begin to i guess look into out of body experiences if you want more truth in regards to meeting your guides, this will be very useful for you. And I guess there is caution with this, however, because there can be some things on the astral plane that are not very good, but you can learn some protective mechanisms. There are various books and teachings about this if you wanted to meet them on a more personal level then this would be the way to do it you know, like if you wanted to have an out-of-body experience and wanted to to meet Simon more face to face mm -hmm. this would be the way of doing it having an out-of-body experience or going into meditation and just visualizing your guides faces or the face of the higher self or not the higher self because that can have various faces I guess but the energy of the higher self if you go into this space and you are very very quiet there is just Simon is just saying that there is needing to be a bit more quiet with you a bit more quieting and going within Mm -hmm. um, feels like you have been very externally focused with the book and all of this sort of spiritual work is is very good but it's very externally focused and you will need to balance this with internally focused 
otherwise there is unbalance with this. Mm -hmm. And he can see that you are getting very stressed if you are just externally focused, especially when more people will come to you looking for assistance and so on, and you will be booked out or something and you will need to take time you will need to take time out of your week just to spend in quiet meditation, quiet relaxation, quiet going within. This is probably what he said. Your higher self's concern was going within. And I guess the, the problem with the BQH and these sort of ones is that it's a very it's a more external method of putting out the information because you are using the voice. So yeah. there is just a need for some, some healing mechanisms that do not require any talking, any using the voice at all. Like in total silence, um, just to be just to be in silence. Mm -hmm. So I did go to a um, lady that did some Reiki on me. Was that, was she a good choice or? She was not fully bringing in the energy that day, which is why you could not feel it very well. Mm -hmm. She was not always um, sometimes you need to scope out the consciousness of these healers. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, not all of them are going to be operating on the higher fourth and fifth dimensional frequencies with their healings. So you need to be, I guess, sort of um, feeling into your gut about this and not all of them are operating in these higher frequencies. So that's just to keep in mind, not all healers are operating for the highest good for all. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that information. Is there anything else that he wants me to know at this time? No, that's, that's pretty much that's pretty much good. It's it's just important to have to have this sanctuary, I guess, this quiet sort of space, and to spend time to spend time in these fifth dimensional places or spaces on Earth. Make make a fifth dimensional make a fifth dimensional sanctuary for yourself. Make in the new house that you have make a space for yourself where you go into and you immediately are raised in frequency because you have made a special place for yourself okay like a special space that you set the intention and create this space that when you go into this space this is your special fifth dimensional space and this will really help you connect in with the new earth energies and bring you squarely on that timeline. Also, you can keep this fifth dimensional space in your field, but it would be a good practice to, to set aside a special place just for you where you can connect in and receive the messages at any time that you wish to receive them. Mm -hmm. Now, is this um, house that we put an offer on, is that the house that we'll be moving into? There are some possibilities that, you know, at some points, like there are multiple possibilities for you. So it is not, you could do that, but there are, this is always a choice. It is not set in stone. Mm -hmm. So you could choose this or you could choose another one that is coming up for you in the timeline sense. There are multiple that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. And it's just 
operating within this fifth dimensional frequency where you create a special quiet space for yourself and go within to that loving energy. And you can sort of pinpoint which one it is that you would like to choose that would be most preferable to your vibration. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and would tapping exercises be useful to release the emotion, the built up emotion? Yes, yes, yes. This is especially good for the physical body, releasing these emotions. The body does not necessarily respond as well to, I guess, like um, other ways of doing things, but it does respond very well to, to tapping for the emotional release. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, we, feel, we do a lot of um, work on the, on the other bodies, the emotional and the upper emotional and astral sort of bodies and the spiritual bodies, but we, we forget, we forget about this part, we forget about this part, so this is very, um, very good and useful for this part. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for all the information that you provided.